So do you see uh, issues of compliance like in Netherlands? I'm sometimes more afraid of Google than of laxatives. I believe Google more than they do Mark from Holland, the king of poo. But it seems that Al-Hakim now is not anymore Al-Hakim. Well, you look like a wise man, so I think that they make a mistake if they leave you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good day to everybody and welcome to today's show of Nova Talks. Today we are going to tackle on an important complaint for everybody, for infants, children, adolescents, adults, and it affects both sexes, males and females. And it's our pleasure to have our uh, guest today, Professor Mark Beninga. He is a professor of pediatrics at IMA Children's Hospital and Amsterdam University Medical Center in Netherlands. Welcome, Prof. Mark, for joining us today, and I'm sure you have a long trip to reach the region here. Thank you, Dr. Ali. It's always a pleasure to see you uh, and to talk with you. Uh, and as you know, it was a very easy flight from uh, Amsterdam to Saudi Arabia. Thank you very much. Today we are going to talk about constipation. And uh, from the start, you think constipation, is it a disease or it is a complaint? And what, how would you describe or define constipation? So you, you start with a difficult question, uh, if it's a symptom or a clinical entity, and it's a little bit in between. Because uh, as you said in your introduction, it's, uh, you can recognize it in infants, in children and adolescents. Uh, and what is common in all these children is that they have infrequent bowel movements. Uh, the, the stools are usually hard uh, and also painful when they uh, go to the toilet. And if you combine all these criteria, um, you fulfill the criteria for what we call functional constipation. What we have observed in our practice that some families, when you ask them about constipation, they deny it because they think if the child is going every day to the toilet, he has, they don't know, you know whether the defecation is painful or not because you know, he is inside and they are outside. And uh, we have difficulties to you know, get a appropriate history from these parents. So how would you tackle this issue? Well, indeed, in the, in the older children, it might be difficult because you don't see that they defecate. But usually the mothers know exactly uh, everything about the defecation pattern of, uh, of their children. Um, and so I think that many children complain of abdominal pain, of course. And not only that, but they complain of pain during defecation. So they sometimes scream uh, or they... Uh, they, they tell you, they tell the mother or the father that it's very difficult to pass the stools. Uh, and in the older children, it's uh, an, a very other, uh, very important characteristic is fecal incontinence. So they lose stools without knowing it. And this is because the rectum is packed with uh, feces. This is in the older children. In the younger children, in the infants, well, you are a father as, uh, yourself. And you know that you can recognize if a baby has difficulties to uh, expel the feces. So in those children, it's, it's a little bit more easy to, uh, to see that they have indeed constipation. So in fecal incontinence or soiling, we have issues because some patients are referred to the clinics because of diarrhea. And it's very difficult to convince the family that the child is having constipation. And if you prescribe laxative, for example, they will object it because the child is having diarrhea and this will exacerbate the problem. Yeah, that's a, that's a common mistake. But you as a doctor, uh, you have to explain that, uh, that we recognize it very well and that there's a combination of, of symptoms uh, which are listed in the Rome criteria. Uh, and we are very able to recognize that it is true constipation and diarrhea is something totally different because the difference between the diarrhea as the, the parents think it is 
we recognize as doctors because the fecal incontinence is constantly. It, it can be during the morning, it can be during the, the afternoon, even during the night, which is, um, which is related uh, to the most severe form of constipation. So we recognize that it's completely different than, uh, for instance, in gastroenteritis. So, you know, some uh, families, they are very anxious. They think constipation is something major. And others, they think this is normal because the father and the mother has constipation. And so what? Yeah, well... So how would you define, I mean, you know, uh, define the causes behind constipation? Is it always something simple or you need to worry about it? Um, so, again, it's a difficult question. We have, we have our thoughts about the causes of constipation. So if you look in life, then there are several times in life that children will develop constipation. So very s simple is when the mother changes from breastfeeding to formula feeding. The consistency of stools changes, uh, which means that it's a little bit more difficult to expel the feces. Uh, and uh, at that moment, um, the child can develop constipation at that particular time. Another thing is when the children get toilet trained, uh, they're sometimes afraid for going to the toilet. And that's another moment in life that children develop uh, constipation. But what we as pediatricians think is the most common cause of constipation is withholding stools. So these children contract rather than relax their sphincter complex because of a negative experience in the past, because of hard stools or because they are frightened for the, for the toilet. And those circumstances lead to withholding behavior and at the end of the day, if you withhold stools, the stools become larger, come uh, harder, and come even more uh, painful to expel. And then what we, this is what we call the vicious circle of constipation. And then it's up to the doctor to treat this ch child uh, properly. So the main cause, again, of constipation in, in, our, in our heads is that these children withhold, uh, have be withholding behavior because of a painful experience in the past. And even babies can show this uh, pattern. Even we have noticed this uh, in school age children, especially uh, females, they avoid to go to the toilet when it is needed, so they would hold it, and th this vicious cycle will continue. The other question, you know, do you need to do any further testing like blood test or imaging to make a diagnosis of Constipation. Again, lots of parents like the doctor to do investigation, but I think I'm against it. Because uh, as we said before, we as doctors can really recognize the difference between diarrhea and uh, fecal incontinence based, off, uh, based on constipation. Uh, and if you use your ears, you use your hands, so do physical examination, and sometimes use a bio di diary, uh, in which the parents can keep the defecation pattern like uh, frequency and consistency and incontinence. And we use the, the three of them. We as doctors are in more than 95% sure that this is just functional constipation. Why do we know it? Because it's so prevalent. It's all over the world, always the same sympt uh, symptomatology. So therefore we don't need any investigations. And it's very important for parents to know that less than 5% of all children we see at our outpatient clinic have an organic cause for constipation. This is also important because we do know that um, children with, with organic cause of constipation will have problems right after birth. Uh, and this is different from the children with functional constipation. So parents don't have to be afraid that there is a very serious cause for their, uh, for the constipation of their child. Do you think, you know, uh, you know, having stool charts in the clinic may, you know, give you a better understanding of the Yeah, not, 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 uh, not only for the doctors, but also for the parents, okay. because if you use these stool, stool charts, you better know how frequent you, your child goes to the toilet, but also you can look at the color of the stool, you can look at the consistency of stools, and this helps the doctor in reassuring mm -hmm the parents that it's functional constipation and we really know what we are doing. Nowadays we are seeing more and more babies who have constipation, which we did not recognize it in the past. So if you have a, a baby who has constipation and the parents came seeking help, help, 
How would you treat? How would you treat these babies? Okay, so again, I like to reassure the parents first because again, we recognize that the baby has functional constipation as well. I will state very firmly that there's no uh, organic cause underlying the constipation of their baby, and then. Um, there are several ways to, to look at it. So first of all, the doctor should know and ask the parents how they make the formula, if, the, if the, the, the child receives formula. Because some of these mothers, they put too much powder into the formula, uh, into the bottle. And this can give hard stools. And of course, this give, can give rise to constipation. If, the ch if, if everything is okay, then you can, uh, uh, of course, start with this very new formula with uh, which is enriched with magnesium. Uh, and why magnesium? Because we do know that it, magnesium attracts water. It, it works like an osmotic laxative, what we call. And very nice studies in the Middle East, uh, including almost 300 children, showed that if you use this formula with, uh, uh, enriched with magnesium, that it has uh, softer stools uh, and also um, will uh, give... Um, more frequent stools, and if we look at these uh, these babies uh, um, treated with this uh, this formula, then uh, we were able to show that uh, it's not only the first seven days, but the the, the 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 success will sustain. So after even after 30 days, the children still had a good consistency of stools and more frequent stools. And of course, if you have this combination, you have less pain, and everybody is uh, satisfied. So that would be my next step. Again, sometimes constipation is difficult to treat, and if you're not successful with this very nice formula, you need to go to the next step, and that's using laxatives. Uh, and it depends on what's in your country available, but there are two very good laxatives. One is lactulose, and the other one is polyethylene glycol, and both are working very well in children. So that would be my approach in infants. So well, you mentioned the formula and making the formula. And if you have you know, a baby who's you crossed the first year of life and they are consuming cow milk, would you recommend uh, camel milk like in our region? Is it good? Oh, that's, 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 this question is too difficult for me. Have you tried camel milk before? I've never tried camel milk uh, before. I never uh, was on a camel, so I, I can't. I, I know what a camel looks like, but I never tried it. So, what are the common mistakes uh, you know, you know, done during the treatment of constipation? The treatment. Yeah, that's also a very good question. So, first of all, the doctor has to know if the cha the, the parents are really compliant to your advice. So, if you suggest this this uh, magnesium enriched formula, do they really take it, or do they? forget it all the time. And the same is true for the laxative use. Many parents are really afraid of using laxative because they think uh, they the, the child will get addicted to it, but there's no addiction to, to uh, laxatives. So uh, for compliance, actually, we have uh, a major issue nowadays. The, the society in, in the region has changed. You know, the new mothers are different than the old mothers, and. Uh, they are attached to, you know, like internet, to Google, to etc. And they read a lot, and they make their decision, they, they, despite the advice from their treating physicians. So, do you see uh, issues of compliance like in Netherlands? Yeah, we have. I think we have exactly the same as you describe in uh, in your country. So, Google. I'm sometimes more afraid of Google than of laxatives. Uh, because parents come in and indeed they tell you what Google says and they have no clue what it means. Uh, and sometimes, and this is very difficult for me to understand, they believe Google more than they do Mark from Holland, the king of poo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's strange for me because I, I uh, devoted my life to this, uh, this, this topic and then still people um, sometimes more rely on, on, on Google. But you know, we have to be honest as doctors and tell exactly what we think uh, and tell exactly what we know. Uh, and I try to persuade these parents who more rely on Google, then you go to Google, but not to Mark anymore. You know, in, in our area, people, when they want to go to a doctor, they say, we'll go to Al-Hakim, Al 
which means a wise man. But it seems that Al-Hakim now is not anymore Al-Hakim. Well, you look like a wise man, so I think that they make a mistake if they leave you. But you know, <laughs> uh, everything happens today. I think one of the reasons for poor compliance, in addition to that, is the duration of therapy. So how, how long do you think the duration of treatment? Is it one week, two weeks? Or no, no, that, it, that's also because I forgot to mention this. Uh, this, is a, this is also a very common mistake. You should treat a child with constipation for at least two months. But I have no problem if you do it for years. If it's necessary, then you should treat this particular infant or young toddler or older child as long as needed. Because we do know if you stop the medication, complaints come back in, in many, many children. So uh, again, you try what, what the aim of the, of the treatment is, soften the stools, get rid of the negative experience, and then try to taper. And if you taper too, 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 too fast or too quick, then the complaints come back. So it's sometimes it's very difficult to convince the family because they come to you and say, oh, the child will have a lazy bowel and this will not work, or they are afraid of addiction, and these are a lot of issues in the minds of parents. And we have difficulty to you know, convince them about that. Yeah, What's that's, your opinion? That's, that, 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 again, I recognize what you say, and they always talk about lazy bowels, and they are afraid that the laxatives make the, the bowel even more lazy. And that's stupid, because, uh, you know, by giving uh, the, the enriched magnesium uh, formula or the, the laxative, you, you try to, to enhance motility, you try to better defecate, you try to soften the stools, and all these, uh, all these uh, topics... Uh, make makes life of these children better so it's you know but we have to convince them dr ali and you are the you are an important doctor in uh, saudi so you have to convince them and beat the internet i hope i have the wisdom of yourself uh, to do this but uh, I, you know and people are afraid everywhere so they need more more education and uh, more training i don't know thank you very much professor meninga for your present us and your excellent insights. It was a pleasure. Thank you and uh, thank you very much uh, and we hope to see you in another show of uh, NOFA Talks. Ma'as-salama.